wanted to talk about the text messages, screenshots, etc., that Freely uh, had shared on the Tumblr. She since deleted them, but some people have got them and recycling them and just using them for their own personal agenda against myself or against Freely. And they're just, uh, you know, they're, they're, some of them are getting a Photoshop, but they look a little bit like patchy and just taken out of context. Basically, a lot of the stuff I did write, but some of it's sort of been sliced and diced just to take out of context because they have a personal agenda against me. Um, and some of the screenshots haven't been uh, manipulated, so they are, but there's, there's a whole mix. But I just want well, this clear the air. Let's be 100% transparent. And let's, uh, let me take ownership for writing some of that stuff and apologize for anyone who was offended or felt used or they read that stuff and like, oh my God, like you're such a mean person or guys are shit or girls are shit or whatever. You gotta understand, again, this is understanding again. This isn't about trusting me or trusting freely or trusting the trolls. This is about understanding. Why would I write something like that? Why would freely share something like that? Why would a troll come along and take it out of context and share it, okay? So it's not about trust. It's not about, again, I don't really believe freely. I don't really believe during I don't believe the jab of the heart. You know, the 50-year-old guy in Chiang Mai, nothing else better to do than <laughs> make troll videos about us day after day after day. Uh, best drama. It's not about trusting who's right or who's wrong, or who's telling the truth or who's lying. It's more, in my opinion, you can disagree with me, but I feel it's about understanding why someone would write something, why someone might share it, or why someone might manipulate it or make a video out of context, whatever. Understanding. So let's just clear, first of all, if you're going to turn off the video, I'm sorry for anyone who felt used or abused or rejected or heard or they don't like guys now because they read that or they don't like girls or whatever. You know, I just wanted to say sorry for that. And I'm just, if I can explain myself, people might say, oh, you only explain it because the, the, the screenshots got shown publicly. Well, this is private stuff. This is not stuff that I would say in public, but because it's out there on the internet, on the World Wide Web, I'd like to try and make up and clear the air. When someone writes something to the ex-girlfriend or the ex-boyfriend, and it's a private conversation, you might write things to make them jealous or make them angry or make them feel whatever emotion because you you feel hurt and generally hurt people hurt people so when you read private stuff it's easy for you oh my god this is crazy shit because it is crazy shit because if you've ever had a long relationship like a long relationship where you're like in each other's pockets for like nine years 24 hours a day almost seven days a week for a long long time she can get intense and especially if there's like a breakup and especially when you've got two people carved up and they're like on social media all day it she can get fucking full on so if you understand crazy shit can happen in life now we've got a lot of young audience you know 16 to 25 olds, maybe even 12 year olds reading this stuff and that's why it shouldn't be on public i said if you don't put this stuff up and she's like fuck you fuck you and we had the North Korea, South Korea war, as I mentioned before. And then, but then she eventually like, okay, let's take it off. I'll take one off. You take yours off. It's done. And then the trolls bring it up. So for the 12-year-old audience out there, this is what adults do when they're angry or they feel hurt or, or whatever. They play games with each other. You know? So don't, uh, don't read into this more than it is. It's just conversations between two people. I think I said one of the comments about someone making a bed for me. And, and when I saw that person make the bed, I was like, this person's fucking legit. But when I wrote that to Freely, I was like trying to be all badass, and like, yeah, she made my fucking bed in the morning, and you know, like, I didn't mean it like that, but I meant it like that when I was talking to Freely, you know. But when I saw someone make the bed, I was like, wow, this is this person's a hard working individual. And I've met some really awesome people the last few months, you know, guys and girls. And I just wanted to say that I think the best thing anyone can do is communicate clearly with intention from day one. And often when you're in a relationship and you're hitting the rebound or whatever they call it, rebound, what even is rebound? You know, maybe you, you feel rejected or you feel lonely or you feel hurt and you, you want some attention from someone else. And that's fine and it's normal, but it's really, really powerful to be clear with people what you're feeling, what you want, what you don't want. If you're unsure, communicate that as well and, and don't rush into anything because it's easy to when your emotions are like, you know, all fired up or, or you just... You've got all these emotions running in your body. It's easy to make decisions or choices that you may regret in the future. Especially if you're like, maybe you've only had one relationship. You know, you've just broken up your first relationship and you're just like, just, you know, like, you're just like, what do I do here? And you meet someone who's really nice and like, oh my God, you know, this person's awesome. Be careful, you know, don't rush into things. Don't rush into things. But at the end of the day, communicate the best you can. 
you know, just open up to people. Don't be afraid to be burned by opening up, you know. If you open up and someone burns you, that's fucking awesome, man, because they've saved you so much time and energy and you can say, okay, you can move on next or just be happy being by yourself. Don't feel you have to be in a relationship. Don't feel you have to have approval. Don't feel you have to be loved by other people for you to love yourself. Love yourself first. Give to yourself. And when you do that, your gifts will make, always make room for you in life. You'll always attract cool people into your life. And you'll attract lessons into your life as well. It's been a roller coaster, man. I've got to admit, it's been a big roller coaster. Ups and downs, pain and pleasure. But yeah, life always has something else ready for you, man. So you can stare at the closed doors or you can see the open ones, man. Well, I should say, if you, if you just stare at closed doors, you won't see when doors open, opportunities arise. And you don't have to have every opportunity. You know, the, the, what's that saying? FOMO, fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. Take a deep breath. Get those early nights. Carve the fuck up. That's really important. Get your serotonin and dopamine levels good. And, uh, and just learn to understand people better. You don't need to have trust. It's easy to bullshit someone to trust you. Understand why would someone say something like this? Why would they do that? You know? Otherwise, it's easy to feel really angry or really hurt or really burnt. So again, in case it wasn't clear, anyone still feels whatever at me, I'm sorry. I'm deeply sorry.